Welcome viewers back to The Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio, that is I, where no God is required for a life of love, joy, peace, fulfillment, meaning and purpose in life, and the good life is one guided by reason and motivated by love. I am making a statement to those of you that are Christians, those of you that are Hindus, those of you that are Muslims, and those of you that are Jews. I am making and giving to you a statement which you may not like today, but I'm demanding and commanding that you give me a demonstration of your God. Today we will discuss demonstrating what you believe to be true versus anecdotal evidences. First of all, we're going to discuss New Testament, I should say Old Testament today, and in part two we will discuss New Testament believers in the Bible to see whether they used demonstrations to prove to unbelievers whether their God was real or not, rather than giving anecdotes. Let's start out with a quote from a religious woman by the name of Joyce Johnson back in March of 2006, a very strong Christian woman. And back about 25 years ago, I would have agreed with this statement. And this was the quote that she wrote and she spoke upon in her article called A Demonstration of the Power of God. I quote, The walk in the supernatural, a demonstration of the power of God, ought to be or must be the norm or the normative for the true believer. In other words, if you, my dear Christian friends, and all you other religious people out there, are true believers, can you demonstrate this power. Can you demonstrate to me a skeptic, an unbeliever, or anyone else that doesn't believe in your God, that your God is real? What most Christians use are anecdotes. An anecdote is a short story or episode, supposedly true, testimonial in nature. I hear it all the time from my dear Christian friends, and even Muslims and Hindus and Jews, when I discuss to you, with you why I don't believe in God, and how you can prove and demonstrate to me that your God is real. What I get 99.999% of the time is, well, David, I know Jesus is real because of what he's done for me. He's changed my life. I was once a bad person. Now I'm a good person. There's my evidence. Well, anecdotes are not enough. You must demonstrate it. I will use your book, The Bible, today to prove to you, my dear Christians and all you religious people out there, that if you want to prove your God exists, anecdotal evidences are not enough. You must show me the money, like Jerry Maguire said. You've got to show me something. You've got to demonstrate this power. Joyce Johnson said, it must be the norm for a true believer to be walking in the Spirit of God, a life close to Jesus. You must demonstrate this power. I will first use Prophet Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 18. I will paraphrase the narrative. We have the man of God called Elijah standing before 450 prophets and preachers of the Canaanite god of fertility, Baal. Here we have a standoff between preachers from one god against a preacher from another god. Elijah stood between the backslidden Israelites who were wanting and tempting to worship Baal and the 450 prophets of Baal, all found in 1 Kings chapter 18. Elijah said, hey, prophets of Baal, I've got an idea. Instead of just giving anecdotes, my little short story or episode that my God is real, David, because he's changed my life. But you can't give a demonstration. Elijah was a man. Elijah said, let me demonstrate to you that my God is real. Well, the Bible says that he took two heifers or two oxen, gave one oxen to the prophets of Baal, and he kept one on his own. He told the prophets of Baal, chop it up, chop up the dead carcass, light upon your altar, call upon your God, Baal, and let's see if your God will consume the sacrifice. And then, of course, if yours doesn't work, I will have my carcass chopped up and laid upon the altar to Jehovah. And I'll even pour water on my sacrifice and put water in trenches of water around the sacrifice. 
and you watch as I demonstrate the power of the true God. Christians, are you listening to this? I want you to listen and I want you to think. The narrative goes on. The prophets of Baal begin to call upon their God, Baal. It went on for a few days. Nothing happened, of course. They cut themselves with knights and they called upon Baal to prove and demonstrate the existence of this God. Well, your story in your book, the Bible says, nothing happened. But what's interesting to know is Elijah taunted the 450 prophets of Baal. Well, maybe I get an, I should get an idea and start taunting those of you Christians that tell me that your God is real. I don't taunt because I'm probably a little too nice. But here's what Elijah did. He shouted to the prophets of Baal, Shout louder! Surely God, your God, is the true God. Perhaps he, Baal, is deep in thought. Or he's busy. Or he's traveling. Or maybe he is sleeping. Or let's add, maybe the prophet or the God Baal was at Starbucks or taking a nap. He taunted the prophets of Baal and nothing happened. Elijah said, move back boys, move back guys. Let me show you now a demonstration of the power of God, which is the normative for a true believer. The Bible says Elijah called upon your God, my Christian friends, and Jewish friends, and Islam, and Muslim friends. He called upon his God, and here's what Elijah said. No anecdotal evidence is here. He was a real man. He stood up and said, I'm going to prove it with a demonstration. He said, answer me, Lord, so that these people, the backslidden Jews and the prophets of Baal, so that these people will know that you, Lord, are God. And of course, the Bible says, of course, I don't believe this, but you believe this, my dear Christian friends. The Bible says in 1 Kings 18 that God answered and consuming fire came from heaven, lapped up the sacrifice of dead, rotten carcass and flesh and all the water. And the prophets of Baal conceded and said, oh, we're wrong. The God of Israel is the true God. Well, like a loving prophet and a loving God and a loving religion does, they accepted the 450 prophets of Baal into the fold because it's a loving religion. Well, that's erroneous. In fact, your Bible says they slew the 450 prophets of Baal. Another beautiful moral story in the Bible. Elijah didn't mess around. He, de he demonstrated what he believed to be true with Anecdotal evidence? No, with true demonstration of power. Let me tell you a couple little things that happened in my life as the preaching humanist, as a missionary and an evangelist to magical Christians and all you believers in the supernatural. I was at a grocery store not long ago, and I talked to people all the time. I carry my business cards around, the preaching humanist with David Alverio cards around, and I talk to people. I get into conversation and dialogue. I noticed a man at the grocery store in the produce department had some big bling bling going on. He had a large Jesus Christian cross. And I, with my big mouth, very friendly and nice, went up to him and said, Wow, you've got some bling bling there. What's going on here? And he didn't like that. He got a little bit upset. Usually Christians are very friendly with me. and We talk and we have fun talking about this. But he didn't like that. He got a little bit upset. So I begin to demand evidence, which I do. I begin to demand that he do as Jesus said. These signs will follow those that believe. They will give demonstrations of this power, not just anecdotal evidences and testimonies. He got a little bit upset, upset with me, and he told me, he said, you, David, will see the supernatural tonight because I'm going to pray to God, and he's going to send either demons or angels to you, and he will prove to you that God is real. Well, I went on and I said, I don't believe it. He got upset at me, threatened me, and said if we were outside, he'd punch me in the face. And again, as I always do, I thank you for the love of Jesus. Well, that night came, laid my head on my pillow, and lo and behold, I, the preaching humanist, slept like a baby. Had a wonderful sleep that night. Another incident happened not long ago. I was in talking with a pastor in a church in a suburban part of Austin. 
very fundamentalist preacher, a man about my age in his mid to late 50s, and we had great dialogue. I turned the conversation back on him, as I always do, and I begin to proclaim to him that you don't need a God to be good, and there's no evidence for God, and you can progress on in life without supernatural beliefs, and how it benefits society in every way. Well, of course, he began to give his anecdotal evidences, his short stories, and of testimonies and episodes supposedly true in nature. Well, he couldn't give me a demonstration. He tried to, he couldn't. So he said, well, David, I'll tell you what, I'm going to pray for you. And within the next seven days, you will see things happen in your life. Things are going to change in your life, David, because I'm going to pray and God's going to demonstrate the power of no anecdotal evidence. He's going to show and prove to you that he's real because I'm going to pray. I said, do you want me to come back in seven days? He goes, yeah, come back in seven days and tell me what happened. I said, okay, man, good guy. We shook hands. Seven days later, I came back. I said, hey, good to see you. We sat down and began to talk in his office. And I said, well, guess what? Nothing happened other than my normal lifestyle, my good life, happy life, but nothing really extraordinary happened in my life. And of course he said, well, I'll keep praying. You just keep waiting. God's going to answer me. God never has. And I said, dude, it's a mythology. Wake up and begin to think. So he tried one more time to give me a demonstration of this power of God. He introduced me to one of the uh, church receptionist, which just happened to be his daughter, uh, a young girl in her mid-20s. And she told me that she saw someone risen from the dead, just like Jesus raising Lazarus. And I asked, as I always do, can you give me a verification on that? Do you have a video of that? Can you show me this? And of course, she couldn't. No one can. Well, this happens to me all the time, my dear Christian friends. I demand a demonstration. God's prophets, God's holy men of old, and in the Old Testament, didn't mess around. They gave proof of what they believed, not just by their words, but they actually demonstrated the power of God. Exodus chapter 7, you know the story, Christians. I hope you do. If you're a true Christian, you should be reading this book called the Bible. I remember the story. Moses and Aaron were called of God to go to Pharaoh and command that God, God's word, to Pharaoh, let my people go. Moses had a speech impediment, which for some reason God didn't heal. So Aaron, Moses' big brother, had to be the mouthpiece for Moses. God told Moses and Aaron, I will harden the heart of Pharaoh so that I can just send some plagues and punish me some people because I just love to be malevolent and diabolical because that's what I do in the Bible. Well, the Bible clearly says, that God told Moses and Aaron, Pharaoh will ask you to give a demonstration to prove that I, Jehovah, am the true God. The story goes on. Moses and Aaron stood before Pharaoh. Aaron lifted up his rod, threw it upon the ground, and wail and behold, it turned into a snake, a demonstration of the power of God. No pure anecdotes and testimonies, but a demonstration of this supernatural God. Well, it's interesting to know this narrative in the Bible goes on. The magicians, the priests of the Egyptian gods, lifted up their rods, threw their rods down, and guess what happened? Yeah, we have some more snakes. Many snakes appeared out of nowhere. The magic of the supernatural world you claim exists. There we have several snakes from the Pharaoh's magicians and one snake from Moses and Aaron. Well, the Bible says God's snake swallowed up the snakes of the Egyptian gods. A demonstration of the power of God. My question to you, my religious friends who hopefully are viewing this, do you have more for me and other skeptics and atheists, humanists and secularists, do you have more for us than just your little testimony? I heard a preacher on the radio the other day. I would give my right arm to sit and talk with this man. I'd even give two arms to go into his church and give me 30 minutes to proclaim to them and talk to Christians. I hope to do that one day. I would love it. I salivate thinking about it. I get excited about standing before Christians. That's what I am as a missionary to believers. Well, 
You must demonstrate to me the power of God. You must demonstrate to me and all of us who do not believe it because these little short stories and episodes are not enough. We demand evidence. Can you be like Aaron? Can you take a rod and throw it on the ground and demonstrate this supernatural God you believe exists? Can you be like Elijah and boldly call upon your God to demonstrate that he is real to we who do not believe in the supernatural? Or will you continue with your demonstrations? I will continue with the story that I almost forgot to tell you. A preacher on the radio was saying to his congregation, he said, when you, my Christian sheep, my flock, when you encounter those that do not believe in God, don't debate, don't argue. Just say, you know, all I know is that Jesus has changed my life. That's my demonstration to you. Well, my dear Christian friends, life transformation results whenever anybody pays more attention to an idea, a philosophy, a belief system, than they do to the details of life. If you're engrossed into any philosophy, whether it's a good philosophy or a bad philosophy, philosophy, you will conform to that. That's all that is, is conformism. But you've got to show me something. You've got to demonstrate it. Will any of you take me up on the supernatural demonstration of power claim? Will any of you, or do any of you, have the nerve, the faith, and the power to show me something other than the natural world, other than space, time, energy, and matter? Can you show me something supernatural? You can't. I've only had two or three people of the thousands I've talked to in the last 20 to 25 years have enough nerve and guts to attempt it, and they've all failed because they can't do it. What should this be doing to you, my dear Christian friends, other than making you angry? Hopefully, it'll make you think. And you'll go, you know, I really can't demonstrate this because it's by faith. Part two will be even better. Then we're going to discuss the New Testament believers and what Jesus told you to do as New Testament believers. I close with this. Joyce Johnson, the author of the article, A Demonstration of Power, back in March 2006, and I quote again, A walk in the supernatural, a demonstration of the power of God. This is a fundamentalist Christian, something I used to preach 25 to 30 years ago as a Christian. This should be the norm, the normative of a true believer. There should be signs and wonders. There should be powerful demonstrations and supernatural demonstrations of God all around because of your belief in Jesus, your belief in this magical, powerful God you say that exists. Well, sad to say, I'm not happy about this, but Sister Joyce Johnson died of cancer in 2012. And I'm not happy about that. I don't like anybody to die of a horrific disease like cancer. And I hope she didn't suffer. But my question to you is, my dear magical religious people, you believe in demonstrations? You believe in a miracle working God? Joyce Johnson died of cancer. And I'm sure, I'm assuming, that she believed God for healing, a demonstration of the power of God. Her friends and her loved ones and families were praying for her. And of course, nothing happened. Will you, my dear religious friends, all you religious people, no matter what God you worship, can you show me a demonstration of the power of your God? Or will you just depend upon your anecdotes? Or will you just depend upon what your preachers tell you? Just tell these atheists out there that Jesus loves you and quote scripture to them and tell them that Jesus has changed my life. Folks, that doesn't work. You've got to give me a demonstration. I'm looking forward to giving you part two, which is coming up briefly. and We will discuss the same topic using what Jesus told you to do. So, thank you again for watching The Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio. Have a wonderful day.